Everybody, Robert Jesse Dominguez, season two, episode 13. So, we're here today, and today in studio, today is with I'm with Ash and Steven. Steven's on, who's on on the line right now. Say hi, Steven. Hello, hello, hey, Ash. Hey, hey, uh, that was a good dinner, by the way. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> so, yeah, that was Ash. That was, that was oh, delicious. Yeah, did you really uh, like it? <laughs> I, I did. I did. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, give it a, give it an eight out of ten. <laughs> um, in studio today is um, my good friend. And let's call him John. Uh, we we talked about John's story on season one, episode four, "Mind Your Ins and P's." Season two, episode ten, "Longview Strikes Back." John, welcome. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. It's it's good to finally have you on, man. I know, I know we've we've talked on the on the phone a lot the last couple of weeks, and we've discussed. You know, I didn't. I think at, at the very beginning, I I just wanted to talk to you and get you, get you through this. I didn't want to. I, I mean, that was that was my goal was to get you on, but I I wanted you to come on when you wanted to come on. So, did you want to touch on that really quick? Uh, yeah, I can say that you are very <laughs> persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome <laughs> um uh because I, I think i think you know your your shows i mean your two episodes has has resonated with a lot of a lot of the fans uh that are that actually listen and download our shows because i know uh, a couple guys were messaging me like on messenger and then like they were uh going on twitter and they were saying hey you know we we hope that the long view guy comes on and and I always say, you know, stay tuned. Maybe I don't know. Maybe so. Um, but I, I've always, I've always been intrigued with your story. I, I know we talked way back. I think it was uh, maybe like four or five years ago. You worked for an employer. I worked for an employer. Your, your, your job was servicing mine, and that's that's how we kind of got t- talking about it. And and you approached me one day about this story, and then uh, we started talking about it. And then I, I thought it was an interesting story. It's the most. Uh, I've, ha- I've I've interviewed so many people, and I've talked to so many people that had incidents, whether they've seen a Bigfoot or heard a Bigfoot or smelled a Bigfoot or seen footprints or got screamed at. Your story kind of has like the whole deal, like everything that anybody would ever have a Bigfoot incident. And I don't know, I wouldn't consider you lucky. I'm just saying you just had it all. Yeah, yeah, we had we had all that. Um, I I don't consider myself lucky. Right, <clears throat> right. But yeah, we, uh, me and my brother in law at the time did did see all of that. Um, do you want to you want to touch on like why why you were out there why you were out in Longview? And this was this was not technically in Longview. It was uh, out, the outskirts of Longview. Yeah, from what I remember, it was outside of Longview. Now, this is back in late 96, early 97. So, like December, January? Yeah. Was it, it, it was cold. It was cold, okay. Um, so, you want to touch on why, why you were out there? And I had just uh, gotten married. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would just gotten married, and uh, my wife wanted to go see her sister, who lived down there, mm-hmm. and she wanted to see her nieces. Okay, uh, so they had three girls down there, and they were and they were pretty young, right? Yeah, they were like the oldest was, she was ten, the middle she was about 
five, and the youngest was about three. So they were babies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. They were little. Um. So when you were out there, they were, you were visiting, and can you can you describe like the area or uh, how it looked? I mean, because you're you, the setting, the setting. Yeah, the setting, stuff like that. Uh, when we <clears throat> we because uh, Bob and I have went over this off 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 this show, so. It was it was off Highway Twenty. That's that's what I remember. I can't I can't remember the exit or any of that. But we went about a mile, maybe more, just off the highway, and then we went down these little country roads. And where he lived, my my he being my my brother in law at the time, right. his mom had a, a bunch of land, and he he and his family lived on it. Okay, so when. Mm. When when we went there, there was just a mailbox. So you turned on this mailbox, and it was at least a quarter mile, maybe more, back to where his mobile home was. Wow! And all the way back there, <clears throat> uh, the land, the trees were cleared out, and all that stuff. For the most part, on the on your left side and mm-hmm. on on your right side, it was nothing but orchard trees, peach, plum. Uh, pear, all that kind of stuff, and so it was like it was like a rich soil. It was like rich soil and all that. Yeah, stuff. he okay. had he had done a lot of work to get the soil right, and mm-hmm. he and he was he was one of those guys that truly lived off the land. He didn't he didn't have a he didn't really have a job. Yeah, I mean he mm-hmm. uh, he he he. Uh, he would only do odd jobs enough to pay the electricity mm-hmm. and the phone bill. Right. And uh, everything else, he lived off the land. I mean, they would only go to the grocery store for, like, toiletries and... Paper and, products. Yeah, and paper products and any chemicals for cleaning. Wow. I mean, he really was like that. And they had, on the left side, as you drove in... It was just rows and rows of of uh, like corn, uh, tomatoes, okra, peppers. Just they grew potatoes. Anything that they thought could grow in that soil, they grew it. Wow! I mean, I mean that, that must took a lot of work for him to do that. Well, yeah, it was him and the, him and uh, his wife and the girls. They all did the upkeep of that. Wow! And so they stayed busy. And then in in the mobile home was. It, it was raggedy as hell. Yeah. I mean, it was just ragged. Um, <clears throat> they were very poor. And around the side, it was cleared off over there. And then uh, there was a big cleared off area that I would I would call it his backyard. Mm-hmm. And there was a pig pen back there, which was, uh, it was just a chain link fence. Okay. That came up to about my chest. Okay. So it was about four foot high, probably. Four yeah. foot, four foot. Yeah, I mean, I could lean on it like this right. with my, with my hands, and uh, they had some pigs in there, and they had some chickens in there, that they were uh, keeping in there. They usually they had a chicken coop, but they stopped leaving them in there. They were losing so many. Yeah, and uh, and then in the back, they had this. Uh, had this clothesline, these big metal concrete slab. Yeah, they were just in the concrete. Right. And there was a a thick wire clothesline that ran in between the, those two poles. Mm. And they had a dog. Mm. It was a Rottweiler. Uh huh. Fully grown, just mean as hell. It, it was it. And uh, my brother in law had had measured out the chain. To where it would go a step or two into the woods, oh, I and see. the dog knew its its location from that. It knew how long the chain was, right? And it would go right by the pig pen, and right by where the chickens were. So he wanted this dog to be able to go to those places, and this dog was was vicious. Yeah, it was it was awful. If he uh, the first time I went back there, the dog charged me. Yeah. And the thing that stopped him was the chain. The chain. And it was like standing up. You said it was like standing up whenever. It yeah, like, standing up, barking, trying to get at you. Yeah. And and it was, uh, it, it was, I remember asking him, 
after because the dog scared the hell out of me. Yeah. And uh, I said, man, why why you got a dog like that around around your kids and your mm-hmm. wife? Because I mean it. I had seen it kind of snap at the kids too. Yeah. And his wife, and he goes, I I got it for protection. And I said, well, damn, you got all these guns you carry. What the hell do you need to protect? Right. And he just played it off. So anyway, that's that was our An- initiate. I guess. Yeah, initiated. that was my. And I'm a I'm a guy that from from the city. Right. So I'm not this big outdoorsman. I've hunted a couple times. I fished a lot. Right. Um, but I'm not a, a a woods expert by any means. <clears throat> so, um, Ash, you have any questions or mm. no, Stephen? Um, John, whenever you went out there, was it was it hot or was it like was it during the winter time or no? It was, it was it was cold. It was like um, I can't remember. I want to say it was. Right after New Year's, it might have been January. Okay, so it was January? it was chilly. Okay. Yeah, it was chilly out there. Okay, all righty. Um, okay, yeah, that's the only question I had. Um, you said one of one of the stories that because I know we've talked we talked several times about this this story. We talked on the phone and um, you you said what what always kind of got to me is that whenever you said I think you said you had pulled up and you said his youngest daughter was like skinning. A deer. Yeah, his 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 middle daughter, the five okay. year old. Yeah, they had a deer hanging in the tree, and she was on a she was on a uh, uh, a step stool, uh-huh. and she had a knife that was bigger than she was, <laughs> and she was wow. Yeah, she was skinning a deer that she had actually killed. So it, it, that way, you know, the listeners kind of feel what type what type of your guy your brother-in-law was that he he taught his youngest daughters to like shoot and yeah the, hunt and skin. yeah these these girls i mean even to this day they're they're still like that except the oldest the oldest mm-hmm. um is kind of a girly girl okay just a normal girl mm-hmm. not a girly girl but just a normal girl the other two she she wasn't a tomboy no not at all okay the other two they're not even tomboys. They're girly girls too, but but they hunt, they fish, they still um, they still hunt deer. In fact, uh, my son keeps in touch with them because they're they're his cousins all the time. Right. And uh, one of them lives in uh, Austin, and she's got deer by her house that she kills from her living room. Wow. Yeah, she lives way out in the woods. That's impressive. Yeah, my son went down there for about three weeks one time and saw her pop a deer from the yeah. living room window. She had a tripod set up. And, and, don't, don't piss her off. <laughs> and then the other one lives in Springtown, and she still kills. Yeah. They do a lot of that. Hey, Stephen? Yeah. Hey, you might want to go to the other room. Because I I can hear you can hear you can hear Blair right yeah I can hear Blair pretty good hi Blair hey Blair special guest appearance <laughs> bitch ass love you uh-huh. <laughs> bitch ass <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we heard it <laughs> uh, uh, I get to my nerves no, I'm <laughs> oh, um so yeah there I mean he 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 he's a woodsman he's taught his or his girls how to how to do yeah, yeah. I mean, and they're they're. Uh, I mean, he's a legit, uh, and he wasn't a big guy. Either. Yeah, I want to. <clears throat> he was like five foot five, maybe six. Wow, uh, one hundred and forty pounds. And I was like soaking a, wet. I was one hundred forty pounds, like in fourth grade. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, and so he, I. I've seen him several times since then over the years. Yeah. And I've never seen him dress in anything but camo. Mm. I mean, he's he's legit about being a, a woodsman. Always that's, has that's, been. That's his lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. Um so you 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 get to the mobile home and uh whenever well, I was going to ask you this. Whenever you pulled up to the road, you said it was a mailbox. Could you see the mobile home from the road at all? No. Wow! No, you okay. had to drive back there a few minutes. Uh, you would 
have never known anybody was even there uh, because unless you saw the mailbox. And, and what you had to do was when you turned into the mailbox, you had to open a, a, a gate. big gate. Okay. Someone had to get out, open the gate. You drove in, then they went and closed the gate. I think they called it like a, a cow gate. It was yeah. a real big iron gate. Yeah. And then you drove back there for three or four minutes at least to get back there. And I, I I can only imagine when it was muddy, it was just miserable getting back there. Yeah, I bet. Oh, man. That's... Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so you, you get there. Um, you get, you know, you're, you're visiting the in-laws and stuff like that. So kind of... Kind of take me back. Kind of take us from there on. What? what? Okay, we we were uh, we were visiting, and um, he he asked me if I wanted to go help him uh, uh, check his fishing lines. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Man, let's just get away from the kids and everybody. And let's just go." And uh, now I'd never met him. Right. So the first time I had met him uh, was this on this weekend. <clears throat> and I said, yeah, and and uh, my stepson wanted to go, and he said no, which I thought was really odd. Yeah, he just said, nah, it's not, it's not good right now. There's, you know, he had. Well, let me back up a little bit, okay? Because I forgot to tell you this part. When we got there, we, you know, they were showing us everything mm-hmm. in the back, and they took us by the pig pen, and the littlest. My littlest niece at the time said that her pig Sassy had been gotten. Right. Something came and got Sassy. And uh, my wife looked at her sister and said something. And uh, her sister said, well, yeah, that's a 250 pound pig. And something came and and got it and took it out of the fence. It was a, and I don't know, I couldn't understand how something took that out of the fence. I said, well, was it in the yard or anything? No, it was in the yeah. fence like this yeah, one. Yeah. So the, in the pen like this the, one. The fence wasn't damaged or no. ripped open or that. So. No, the fence wasn't damaged or ripped open. There was no dents on it or... So something lifted this pig out of... I'm, I'm uh, assuming. I'm, yeah, we're, we're assuming that. It, okay. But I don't see... Um, my brother-in-law said something to the effect of he thought... Possibly a mountain lion came and got it, yeah, and grabbed it in its teeth and lifted it. But I, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I just don't think a mountain lion can yeah. lift that kind of weight and yeah, get over a fence. Yeah. And so, uh, so then he had asked me, like I said, to to go to go out and go by and get his fish. Yeah. Help him get some fish. I mean, so we're walking down this. This is something I need to bring up too. Okay. It's about the dog. Yeah. So we're there's only like one way in the back part of his property. Everything else but his property was kept everything his property was kept up, but everything else was just a matted mess of thorns, trees, brush. It was pretty thick. It was very thick. Okay. Um and uh I remember that first night that we were there, I heard an armadillo running around out there, and I thought it was the end of the world. And they yeah. started laughing at me because an armadillo came out. Oh yeah, it, they, <laughs> they they sound like yeah, like an army's monster. going through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've had that experience too. So, <laughs> so I had to take I had to walk wide because of the dog. Mm-hmm. You couldn't get into that backwoods because of that dog. So I had to walk wide and walk in that thicket. Yeah, in it, that thicket, which took me probably about four or five extra minutes to get there and get on the trail to where we could go back in there. Now this trail was at least an hour away from his house. Okay, walking to the I believe it's the Sabine River, the Sabine River, yeah, mm-hmm. and it was it was back there. So we were walking, talking you know starting to get to know each other mm-hmm. and um i i remember asking him about the dog like why do you keep that dog there i would be afraid it would get one of the kids i mm-hmm. saw it go after one of the kids mm-hmm. 
And he goes, man, I got this critter running around that, you know, that's why I got him chained off to where he won't get any more of my pigs mm-hmm. or my chicken or any of that. He said that he said that damn dog will scare him off. I guarantee it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said he had went and found this dog before they put it down. Excuse me, because it had, it had attacked. Yeah. And they were going to put it down, and he had to pay extra to get it. It was a known biter. So he, he was getting this to for defense for purposes. For protection. In fact, uh, he was the only person that could go near that dog, and it took him a while. He told me uh, for a while when he had to feed it, he had to put food in a bowl and push the bowl with a stick. Wow. The food and the water over to it. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, it would go after him. That's great. So, mm-hmm. when, when y'all were walking back into the woods to the to, to the Sabim, he walked through the dog, right? And you, Yeah, the, and dog, you... the dog loved him. It got to where it, it liked him. Yeah. But it didn't like anybody else. Didn't like his wife. Didn't like his kids. Um, no one else. Right. Um, so he was the only one that could feed it and and pet it and he 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 told me he he didn't spend too much time around it because he didn't want the dog getting soft. tame yeah, at soft. all and so like I had to walk around and then we're going down the trail and as we're going um, we're coming across this like rock shelf mm-hmm. and the rock shelf starts. It's flat ground, and then it slowly goes up to the to the top of this rock shelf. You couldn't see the top of it, like over the top of it. Right. It was about as high as a, a house, the roof of a house. It's like 10, 12 feet, probably? Maybe even a little more. Okay. So, and right before we got to that rock shelf, right, because the rock shelf wasn't that big. Right. We're getting to it, and I start smelling something funny, like musky, like um, I think I told you smelled like a uh, between dog shit and trash. trash it just yeah. was horrible. So as you as you walk up to the rock cliff, that's when it this thing hits. Kind of, it's like a wall of yeah smell. It's like you walk into it. It's like walking into somebody's fart. Yeah, you weren't expecting it, but there it is. Did now did. Did your brother-in-law catch it before you did, or did did y'all pretty much say we were we were side by side and we both walked right into it. Okay, and uh, right before right before I could say anything, you hear you hear something just crashing through the through the brush and the trees up there. Mm-hmm. You just hear these branches breaking. You hear the ground. You could feel the ground hitting. Mm-hmm. Just boom. Boom, boom, boom. And, you know, when regular people run, you hear it's like boom, 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 boom. This thing was boom, boom, boom. Big, big strides. Yeah, big, big strides. And and just, you could tell what was running was heavy. Yeah. And then, so I look to my left, and this thing jumps off of this rock shelf. Mm -hmm. And when I say jump... I'm showing Robert here with my hands, but yeah. what it did was it went from this rock shelf, it jumped, and it jumped up in the air. And then, boom, landed landed in front of us um, 10 to maybe 20 yards. Wow, that's pretty dang close. Yeah, and it wasn't facing us. It was facing the other side of the trail. Mm-hmm. And it was on all fours. And uh, I think I told you this a little earlier, just scoot it real quick. It just spun around really quick? Yeah, spun around and looked at us. And uh, I noticed its its head was, was pointy. Mm-hmm. And it started rocking back and forth real slow. And it looked at us, and I, I thought, this thing is going to charge me. So, yeah. See the goosebumps? It's got goosebumps going right now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You see, you see those eyes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought I'm dead. This thing's gonna charge me. And I, at that point, I I really thought about running. And for anybody who does, well, Robert knows me. Uh, I'm not a small man. Uh, I've been shot. 
you told me to right so right, it was, i've right. been shot i've been stabbed i've been run over by a car uh, i've been shot at several times i uh, used to have what they call a rough and rowdy past right so so there's there's not a lot of stuff that scares you no not not at all and this this terrified me now i i never asked you this when when this thing landed you know cuz obviously when, if I were to see something jump off a ten foot thing and then jump higher, and then land in front of me, that that would that to me is like supernatural, almost superhero type of. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it now, that's that's something you would see like out of a movie, right? And and when it landed, uh, like there was, it was either mud or dust or right. some kind of shit on its back because it just. Poof, just puffed in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there was like mud or dust or dirt that came off its back. Um, when mm. it when it landed on fourth, did you, did you think it was a bear? No, not not at all. Okay, no, I was sitting there trying to wrap my head around what it is I'm seeing. Okay, and when it spun, you could tell it had fingers and hands. Okay, it spun and looked at us. And and uh, when, it, when it spun, also some more dust came off of right. it. Right. Okay. And then that's when it like rocked back and forth, and then stood up. And uh, mm. this thing, I was, I don't know how to tell this over the over the, the air, over. but I I talked to you about it. This thing, shoulders were wider. Then Robert's got a pretty big TV. Yeah, and they were wider than that. So, when when whenever this thing, uh, man, I it, it whenever this thing it stood up. You you said it, it was it rocking while it was standing up, or it was it was rocking while it was while it was down. Uh huh. It stood up and it like. It made itself stand up straight, mm -hmm. almost like it not normally standing up straight. Right. Like it was trying to make itself as big as possible. Yes. That's, yes. And it looked at us, and it hissed and showed its teeth, mm -hmm. like shh, like that. And and as, as it was standing there, you know, just stood there for a second or two. This happened all very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So as, as it was standing there, it never stood still. It was always kind of... Moving. Yeah. And then it took... Uh, it turned kind of... I'm trying to get this... At an angle? Yeah, at an angle to go back in the forest. It didn't go straight to my right. It went, like, at an angle so I could see the back of it. Mm-hmm. And I could see, like when it stood up, I, I saw its chest muscles separate. That when you told me that, I was man. I've never heard that described by that before. But yeah, yeah, and that's that's what that's what kind of it, it looked like. Um, it looked like a lot like the Hulk covered in fur. Okay, the the muscle structure of it was was that intense and that big. Right. His arms were that big. Um, I think I, I told you his arms seemed unusually long. Long, yeah. Um, and that's common in most sightings and stuff. And the and the hair on the top was thinner than the hair on the bottom of it. Like its waist and legs and stuff. Yeah, its waist and legs had longer hair, and it had it had all kinds of briars and and crap in it. Just stuck on him. On yeah. The, um. Do you do you recall? I mean, we talked about this before. What what color was the? Uh, could you see its skin? Could you see the the color of the of its fur or its the fur or the hair? Looked to be black, but it looked to be real dirty, like it had been in the mud. Okay. So, so they had he had patches of it on him. Yeah, the the patches that didn't look muddy looked black. Okay. And uh, the skin you could see his skin under the fur on its chest. And um, it was kind of a light orange, okay. Maybe even a little pinkish. And oh. it's the nipples. I remember seeing the nipples, and they were they were like dark, real dark. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what made me think. Well, this is. It looked like a guy. 
you know, the chest looked like a man's chest. Right. And uh, it, it, it hissed at us, it looked at us, and then it turned to walk away. As it turned, it started jibber-jabbering in this... I, I, I told you it sounded like samurai music. Yeah, I'm going to play something really real, pretty real quick. Something similar to that? Yeah. Yeah, real similar. That that gives me even chills. <laughs> Sorry, John. Still see the <laughs> goosebumps. That's, uh, that's when the Sierra... Tapes, yeah, it's from that's from Ron Ron Moorhead. Um, he was doing this back in the seventies. He was doing this off like a big cassette with the tapes and stuff on it, rolling on it, uh, with the microphone. So he was he was doing mm. it in Sierra, California. Yeah, it it, it, uh, it was a lot deeper. Yeah, this and it seemed a lot louder. Maybe just because this thing was really close to you, close to us. Yeah, but it took a it took. It took like um, what would have taken me two or three steps to get to where it was going. It right. took one, okay, one and a half. And it was it was it was through the through the briars. Well, it, it went to the the briars. It reached over with his arms, mm-hmm. moved the briars, and then just walked through his left arm. Right. His oh his right. Okay. His right arm, and and moved through the briars and walked right in there as he was jibber jabbering like that and <clears throat> it just seemed like he melted into the forest yeah i i when when you told me this story i, I i've never heard it described that way melted into the or and then you had another time where you said it, the the forest f- swallowed him up yeah i mean like, that's what it looked like the, the the trees and brush just swallowed him up and and I just remember thinking as I've thought back over the years of this is how could something that big, big disappear yeah. mm-hmm. that quick? Because yeah. it literally did disappear for for a second. And then as it's walking, it's it's walking away and, and you could see its hands. You could see the top of its head also. Because it wasn't trying to walk away fast. It was it was it was not like trying to get away from us. Right. Uh I think it just wanted us out of there. Yeah, I think yeah. this this is what I'm thinking right now is that if this incident was like in the woods, if you guys were in the woods and not on the trail, it would have it would have broke branches right there in front of you. But I think it it stepped into the woods like you said, it's got swallowed up to start breaking, you know, branches and start slapping stuff to let you know that hey, I don't want you here. So that's that's my thinking on it cuz I've talked to so many people about it and not about this, but you know, their incidents and it sounds similar to it. You ran into an alpha male, so go ahead, John. Well, that's 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 exactly what it did. As it was walking, I could see its its head, and I could see its arms lift like way up, and you could hear it. You could see it smack smack trees, and it just sounded like a shotgun going off as yeah. it was smacking these trees, and you could see like the bark splinter. Because of the, the brakes? Yeah, not the brakes, because he was hitting the, the trunks of the trees. Okay. And the bark would just... Psh, just explode? Yeah, and wow. then he would... Yeah, and then he would walk up and and he would break branches, but he wouldn't break them off. He'd just break them and bend them down. And, and a couple of the branches, uh, when he actually grabbed them to break them, they exploded in his hand. I remember that very vividly. Yeah. Mm. And then... It disappeared where, where, where we couldn't see it. Right. And uh, I turned around and, and said to my brother-in-law, I, was, I said, what the fuck was that? And and he goes, that's that critter I've been telling you about. That's such a benign term that so <laughs> yeah. many people have described. Yeah. Like, not just like that sort of thing, but like on, like on Hillier or yeah. whatever, like the, the goblin or whatever. It's like, oh, there's a booger or a critter. It's like, just like, you yeah, know, whatever. Psst. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so it just seems like such a blow off term, but I guess if you don't know what you're dealing with Yeah. What else are you gonna call he, it? He he never used the term Bigfoot, right? <laughs> no, he never he never did and at that point I didn't either. Right. That's I wasn't thinking Bigfoot. I was like I even I think I 
may have said to him, I'm not sure on this part, but I, I said, dude, that's not a fucking critter. A critter's like a a, a rat. Yeah. Or a a possum. A possum or something like that. Yeah. I said, That's a that's a damn monster. Yeah. And uh and he goes, Yeah, I can't stand that thing. It's been stealing my fish. It's been it's it's been it's it's been uh it's causing all the ruckus at the house. So I, I'm this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this was not the first time he's probably seen this thing. From I, I think you're right. Okay. Um I want to backtrack a little bit about whenever it came out, whenever it landed and jumped you know, stood up. Sure. Um mm-hmm. You we talked off show about it, but you said it had like a sagittal crest, right? It's the it's, its head was kind of pointing in the back. Yeah, like like the uh like the ass end of a football, and and the shoulders, hmm. the shoulders like were super wide, and and um, it had a set of of traps on it, mm-hmm. trapezius muscles that right. were just huge. They were so huge to the point where it looked like it didn't have a neck. Wow, and and uh, so and its head was was really big. Everything about this thing was big. It was it was a giant, and you were saying you, you know you, it, it hissed at you. You, you saw its teeth. You, yeah, you, you mentioned it was like uh, some some of it was white, some of it was yellow. Its nose was really really un, you said wide, right? Yeah, it was wide and and almost um, almost kind of flat against its. It didn't stick out pointy. Right, it, it was just, just wide. Wide, yeah. Um, and what kind of got me is that you said that its eyes was sunken back. Into its, or you said sunken yeah, back, right? Yeah, they were sunken back into its head. Like, I could not see its eyes. Like, the whites like, of its eyes or anything? I like couldn't that? see the whites of its eyes. Did, did he, his eyebrows, was his, was his forehead protruding or was it sticking yeah. out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His forehead was, was thick and, and protruding. Um, he had hair all over him, but his face was kind of, it, it wasn't hairy. It was, but it, but it wasn't. What do you, I don't think I ever asked you this also. What was what was the color of his face? Uh, the same color as the uh, as its as its chest, kind so it's of oranges, kind pink, of orange, pinkish. orangish, wow. orangish, pinkish type, like a chimp. Yeah, yeah. I guess if I was going to say, yeah, kind of like a chimp, but um, the skin looked more like ours. Yeah, I guess it didn't look like chimp skin. But it was like, have you ever seen a chimp and you can tell it's a chimp? Right. Well, this thing didn't look like a chimp, but it didn't look like a human either. I, I don't know how right. else to say that. Right. right. Um, I mean, I guess if if I was going to guess and be all sci-fi about it, it looked like a hybrid between us and and apes. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. But but. That thing would be on steroids because it was it was just massive, just uh, the size of it. I can't get over, and that's uh, doing some of the things I've done in my past, from bouncing bars to to some of the other stuff I've done. Right, you always size something up. Right, and when I sized this thing up, when it stood, it it scared me. And and it it, and, it terrified, me. and you had trouble registering what you were seeing, right? I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't get my head around it for a few seconds. I uh, I had many thoughts in these in these few seconds of what it was, but I, I just knew I saw some kind of creature. Like in my head, I was not thinking Bigfoot, right? I was thinking this is a monster that's going to charge me. Yeah, that's going to kill me, and and even even the thought in my head was so. This is how I'm gonna freaking die, out in the woods, being eaten by some, by something that I don't even know what's eating me. Yeah, with my brother-in-law that I hardly know. Yeah, who's got <laughs> a gun and didn't shoot this damn thing. Yeah, I was. We're we're going to we're going to get to that part of the, um, because you said right at that point this thing goes in the woods, smacks and makes makes a samurai sounds and. And so, so go ahead and continue from there. Yeah, when he was going into the woods and he was smacking trees and 
and talking and grumbling. Uh, a brother-in-law, he had a he had a deer rifle on him, and he had like a, I believe, is a three fifty seven pistol. Okay. So he he puts his he he pulls his rifle up and puts him on the scope, mm-hmm. and he's and that's when I was saying like, what the fuck is this? And he told me it's a critter, and I said, shoot that damn thing. He goes, I can't get a bead on it. Yeah. And uh, he said, every time I, I try to get a bead on it, 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 he says, it's just, it's like the forest swallows it up. That's yeah. where I got that from, was yeah. from him. Yeah. His country ass. He just said, it's like the forest swallowed yeah. her up, swallowed it up. <laughs> and uh, so as that went on, it got kind of a little bit quiet. Yeah. For a half second. And you hear it stomp over and smack some more trees. And then you see a tree that's, I don't know how big around you'd say that is, but... Probably like uh, three, four foot? No, three, yeah, three foot? Three foot around tree. And you see this tree start shaking violently. I mean, the tree, the whole thing is, is shaking so violently that it's hitting other trees and breaking branches in the other trees. So you, you don't see it shaking a tree. You just assume it's shaking a tree, right? You don't see it. I don't. You know it's it's there doing it, but you can't. Right. You can okay. only see like little flashes of it. Yeah. I, I, that's what I can't get my head wrapped around even to this day is how something that huge could just stay out of sight. Yeah. And I don't know if it was. It didn't seem like it was particularly trying to stay out of sight. But it was just blended so well. It just blended so well in there that you couldn't see it. Yeah. Or you could only see flashes of it. I think every time that I've had an experience, it's been like that where it's like, you know, it's right there. When yeah. we were, when I went out with Luke to Billy's, mm-hmm. when we were sitting down there in that one, we could hear it walking because, you know, it kind of sounds like yeah. they're sliding their feet. And then it just, everything went dead silent. And then all of a sudden we just hear this loud, like, like huge huge breath and then got like well no it was right before that happened we all got like this you know that uh, that like chill down your spine all pretty much at the same time yeah and then we heard this loud breath and then nothing yeah like it had to have been pretty close yeah billy i remember billy had yeah. a he had a pretty uh mean one out there too because i think he was telling me a story about uh there was a uh, one of his cows died Mm-hmm. And this thing dragged this carcass, this yeah. cow. It's one of his biggest cows. Well, he lived, like, you know, that cemetery was on his property. Yeah. Uh, it was, like, you know, an older one with the big monuments on it. And it was pushing those things over. Like, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. wouldn't be no easy thing. Yeah, Billy, anyway, Billy, yeah. Billy's a, he's a country boy, too, and he's got a lot of guns. And I always asked him that, too. I can mean, shoot it. Because yeah. <laughs> he could never get a beat on it, either. So, But go, go ahead, John. I'm sorry. No, no, that's, I mean, that's great. This is the feedback yeah. uh, that we all need. Um, and I want you guys to keep in mind, my brother-in-law was very much a hunter. Yeah. Very much lived off the land. He ate possums. He ate squirrels. He killed deer. Um, he did not shop in the grocery store for his meat. Right. He killed it. Right. And... uh so he was very accustomed to shooting things, and it always, I don't think he would ever admit this, but he froze up. Yeah. Because I was really surprised thinking back that he didn't, I mean, this thing was was close enough. He could have he could have pulled that pistol and put, put six or eight in him quick. Yeah, we were, we were talking off show about this, about, you know, I asked you, why didn't he, why didn't he just shoot one round at it? And you were saying he was like he was like really responsible and well, yeah, that was after it went back in the woods. But I'm talking about right, right there right. in front of us. He had a clear shot, and he didn't. He, he didn't, didn't even it. reach for his gun. He just stood there as frozen as I did. Man, right. When like from an experience, not just with this, but like for anything else, we'll be doing, think, yeah, um, doing an investigation. Yeah, <clears throat> and be hanging out, taking a break, about ready to pack up, and then something will happen. And we'll just sit there and yeah. let it happen. And then it's like, oh, we're holding all these cameras and stuff. It's probably something kind of similar. You're too busy, like, wrapped yeah. up in the moment. But also, there's been several stories that I've heard in kind of a similar situation where someone will actually have an opportunity to shoot one. 
and they can't because it's too human to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah was, go ahead, Steven. No, I was going to say that I think your brother-in-law probably has seen it enough times, but only on those times he's seen it, he, uh, it was from probably from afar, like, you know, maybe yeah. hundreds of yards and he'll still make it out. And that's, that's something there. But as he showed up, I think that was, he was just as surprised as you. He didn't know what to do. And I don't think anybody even, yes, yeah, if it was me and Robert, I, we probably would still be like, oh gosh, yeah, this thing is massive. But I did want to ask John, you said when it jumped off the cliff, how tall was that cliff again? It was as high as a one-story house. So it's like maybe uh, uh, rooftop high, thir- 13, 14 feet high. So, so like whenever it stood, whenever it stood up, did it head like almost match? Like he could actually climb up that cliff again. He could, if have, he wanted to. He could have walked over there and reached its arm up and pulled himself up, up and wow. grabbed the top of it. Wow, that is that is massive. Especially yeah. for like wow. this part of the country. Yeah, because I mean, they tend to. I mean, they still get big down here, but not like the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Ours, wow. Our, our, our big the the stories that I've read that the Bigfoot's here are a lot smaller than ones yeah, in the Pacific Northwest. So it's kind of like comparing gorillas to orangutans. It's like down yeah. here they're a little bit smaller, have longer hair, and the theory is just because of the climate. Yeah. So. Wow. Um. You were talking about your brother-in-law getting a beat on it, and yeah, he we. Uh, that's when I, you know, we we see the things shaking the tree, right? And uh, he couldn't. He said, "I can't get a beat on it." The tree, the tree was still shaking, and then we hear this god awful scream or roar, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, it was so it was so loud. And so deafening. And as this thing screamed and roared, it didn't stop. It seemed like it went on for hours. <laughs> but it was just... Like maybe 15, 20 seconds, maybe? More than that. Okay. It was long. I mean, it was longer than 15 or 20 seconds. Wow. It just screamed, and I, I didn't think it would ever stop. And... Uh, so I, I, as it was doing that for a few seconds, I stood there, and then I finally it was so bad I had to put my hands over my ears, and you could feel it on the inside. You could just feel it vibrating. Yeah, and uh, you know one of the things I didn't mention right when we were walking up to that walk cliff, yeah, that rock shelf, the uh, the atmosphere changed right before all this happened. Like it got quiet. And- got dead quiet. I mean uh, that. Everything you could hear birds, you could hear squirrels, you could hear everything, and then, you know, a minute or two before we got there, it just got like quiet. It's like you walk into like a soundproof room, yeah, you know, where like it just—it's almost like the air gets sucked out. Yeah, yes, just like that. And uh, I'm a guy that goes with his gut, and I can tell when the atmosphere changes. I just knew something had changed, and. uh so anyway, back back to the story. When it screams like that, mm-hmm. I look over and I and I said, "Dude, I'm I'm out of here." And he goes, "Man, we need to go get that fish." And I was like, "Fuck that, that fish!" fish. <laughs> and I, I I take off running. Yeah. And uh, that makes me feel like this isn't the first time that happened to him, and that he just, you know, it's like, well, this thing messes with me, but whatever. I'm just gonna go about my business. Yeah. Personally, I mean, yeah, his first instinct is fish, yeah. and you know, which which it's it's honorable because he wants to feed his family, you know. But if I was in your situation, I'd be the same thing too. I'm fuck that fish. I'm gone. Uh, in yeah. in my in my case here, I was like, if I live, I'll buy you dinner. Yeah, I don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go to Long John Silver. I'll go get you yeah. some fish. <laughs> so. It's just over there. You go over to the whiskey bin. Yeah. Um. So you started heading back toward uh, the the mobile home, right? Yeah. So we're we're running, and and I'm a big dude, and and he's a lot smaller than I am. So he runs way. He gets ahead of me, and I had to stop several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I'm built for comfort, not speed. <laughs> <laughs> were you? W- would you say you were halfway to the river whenever y'all turned around and started coming back? Uh, we were a little more than halfway. Okay. So uh, that was that was, and you said it took like a what, an hour? About an hour to yeah. get to get to the wow. It was it was a long way back there. Uh, so as as we're running back, this thing starts shadowing us on the left side, mm-hmm. and you could see it. We're running. This thing's keeping up with us, and it doesn't look like it's running. Yeah, it it's looks just... like it's. To me, it looked like it's floating. Yeah, I don't even know how else to say it. It didn't move like a human. It didn't. You you said something earlier, which I kind of it kind of caught me a little bit. You said that whenever it went into the woods and whenever it was moving, it was it was hunched over. Yeah, at times it would it would uh, after it stood up, that was the straightest it stood up. The rest of the time it was kind of hunched over, mm-hmm. and when it walked or moved or ran or however it was keeping up with us, it was like it's the upper part of his back was kind of humped over, yeah. it, it, like it. Um, like it doesn't walk totally straight up. Yeah, it, it walks straight up, but the upper part of his back's not straight. I don't. Yeah, know if I'm saying that right or not. No, it makes sense. I I've experienced that in on video and other stuff. So I've seen, mm-hmm. I've seen some video. I've caught some video of a Bigfoot doing that, like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was kind of humped over like that. We we have in in studio we have a uh, Ash bought a, a Bigfoot that says warning please do not feed. These the Sasquatch, and so the the <laughs> the uh, silhouette of it is like it's kind of it's kind of like walking in yeah. a in a hunch position. It looks like it was probably taken from the Patterson film. Yeah, it, look, it kind of looks like Patty. So, um, oh man, so um, I was trying to think. I was going to ask you something, but I forgot. Um, but go ahead and. Well, as we were moving. Like I said, I had to stop several times, and to me, that was the, one of the most frightening parts because I keep thinking this thing is just going to bust out of the uh, forest and grab me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and as I'm sitting there, there were times that it it got way ahead of us, and you didn't see it. Yeah, you just see it. You you'd hear it. It wasn't trying to be quiet. You'd right. see it, and it was way down there looking at us. And as we were resting, uh, my brother-in-law would put his scope on it and try to get a shot. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I, I tell him, shoot it. Shoot this damn thing. And he goes, I can't get a beat on it. Every time I see it, it's like it disappears. Yeah. It's like the forest. He kept saying, it's like the forest swallows it up. And we could see it. And it just seems like it would hide behind trees and then just barely peek its face over. Yeah. And then you could, or you could see it in a real thicket, real bunch of thicket. And it would just, you see something rocking back and forth where you couldn't see it, but you knew something was in there because it's rocking back and forth. You see a dark shape kind of rocking back and forth. And then we'd move again. And sometimes it would get behind us. Uh huh. It was just, it was just... It was constantly shadowing y'all. Yeah, and it was kind of playing with us in a way, like, get out of here. Yeah. And the way it moved was... was uh, The stuff it, it was in and moving in, a human couldn't do it. I don't care if right. it's Survivor Man or whoever those guys are. Or, there's no way they can move through this stuff. Yeah. Without a, without a machete and uh, having to chop a trail. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And this thing moved with ease. Yeah, that's usually a lot of times, <clears throat> and I've heard other people say this when in a video, if you see something running and mm-hmm. it looks down, then that's a person. You know? Yeah. But to really kind of kind of tell the difference, a lot of times in videos, theoretically, it's you see something and it's in its element. You know, you don't see a lion look where it's stepping. Right. You know, more or less that. It's sure-footed. It knows what it's doing. And if it wants to move completely silent and be like right there, it, it can. Yeah, because like that's his that's his house. That's yeah. his that's his domain. It knows. It probably knows more about that. You know, every nook oh, yeah. and cranny of that that forest than anybody else does. But 
That's a that's a really good point because that's how it acted. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it knew where it was. It knew where it. Had I been in there, I would have had to look where I was stepping, right. try to get through stuff, and this thing just moved like I would move through my living room. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm. I was I was going to ask you, um, this trail that goes to the, to the Sabine River was all that property owned by your brother in law or your yes, uh, all that right there. Yeah, they wow. had a That's- lot of acres. His his mom had bought it, and so she had him on that property. So there was no one out there but him. Wow. And it was it was uh I don't believe I don't know if it was all fenced in or not, but I mean no one lived out there but him. Did did they, did he have any neighbors? Any close neighbors? No. Wow. No. How long had they been living out there? Um I don't know. Uh I know at least a few years, yeah. At least it's, since it's, their littlest one, it sounds had like been born. It sounds like well, all the stuff that they, like the pigs and and the farm stuff, maybe a little bit, a little bit. They've been out there for a while, so I don't know. But that's now was was your mother in law living out there before your brother in law? Uh, it was uh, it was my brother in law's mother. So. Oh. oh, okay. So my wife's mother lived in Fort Worth where okay. we're at. Okay. All right. So so you're heading back to the mobile and it's 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 uh, shadowing you. Um at what point did at what point did it did it stop shadowing you? Um it shadowed us the whole way there. In fact I that's when I was uh one of the really I was scared the most. Is when I see the trail start to open up, and I could see the the mobile home. Right. So man, I'm just I'm hauling ass down there. He's already ahead of me, and he's got all the guns. So wow. <laughs> I didn't have anything. <laughs> and and I'm running, and it didn't come. The thought came to me right when I was about to bust out on that trail, uh-huh. and I thought. Man, I'm about to make it, and then in my head, I'm thinking, "Oh shit, there's that fucking dog." That dog, yeah, you ran I'm right into the die. I die. I made it through this monster, and now this dog's gonna maul me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's exactly what I thought. And I, I come, I come, and I just, you know, right when I walked out of that trail, or not walked out, but ran out of that trail, mm-hmm. look, and that dog um, was right by one of those big post on the clothesline mm-hmm. and he was he was whimpering like a, a loud whimper just scared yeah after that scream i would imagine yeah after that scare and he's he's pissing himself yeah and mm. and i ran right by him and and he was just it was like he was trying to he had no place to hide and he yeah. was trying to find a place to hide and then uh we went inside <laughs> Me and my brother-in-law, mm-hmm. he threw me another rifle that he had, loaded it, went back outside, looked, looked around, turned on the, the back porch light, because at this point, it was uh, it was dark. Yeah. So he had some spotlights out by, by the force. He turned those on, and it was just quiet, just eerily quiet. We didn't see anything. We just... Sat out there and waited for the uh, kids and the and the sisters to get home. They, at, at this point, they weren't even home at all. They, you guys headed, you guys headed to go get the fish, and they they went into town. They went to, and I remember this, some sort of, I guess it would be Longview's version of like Lion Country Safari. Safari. It's like a petting place. No, it wasn't a petting place. It was almost like a, if I remember right, she said like a, where you drive through a, a national mm. uh, a park and you see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's there anymore. It wasn't. I don't think it was when I lived there, but. Yeah. yeah. She said. There's a place like that outside of Tyler, I think. Hmm. And, and that's what she was. She was. That's where they went. Wow. And then. uh because if, if they would have been there, they would have heard that scream. Yeah. So, at this point, you go back. He throws you your rifle, loads it up. Y'all are in the porch or the backyard. 
Yeah. What, what was what was discussed between you and your brother? Well, me, I'm I'm a person that asks a lot of questions, mm-hmm. and I said I said to him, "What what in the fuck was that?" And he said again, "That's that critter that's been coming that took my pig, and." Been killing my chickens, stealing my fish. Yeah, and he he said, you know, comes around and slaps my house all the time. And and I said, uh, why the hell are you living here? Yeah. And he goes, he goes, this is my place. Hmm. And I just thought he was a nut. Yeah. And um, I mean, I wanted out of there that night. That was on the first night you you, yeah. you encountered this. That was that was uh, the second night. The second night, okay. The first night we got there was kind of right at dark, and we went in, ate, and went to bed. Yeah. Um, so this was like the second day we were there, and then mm. he just begged me, said, "Please don't say anything to my wife. We don't want the kids knowing, mm. and we don't want." Uh, you know, just please, please, please promise me you won't say anything. So I did. I promised him, you know, I, I won't say anything. Right. And it was hard because I, I kept trying to um, I kept trying to leave. I told my wife I was sick. She didn't care. I told her I didn't feel safe with that pig being ran off like that. She didn't care. Right. She just told me I was being selfish and. Uh, I kept it mm-hmm. from her. I've never have told her. Yeah. Even even to this day, she just. Uh, but I for the next two days, I don't think I slept. Uh, I wouldn't either. I stayed out back and watched watched the forest, and kept the rifle right by me. So you you were there what four days three days about four. Wow. And, mm. and we went back to go get fish like uh, the, the next day. The next morning, yeah. We were about, yeah. I was about to ask you about that. So, Well, we, you know, he said, we need to go get the fish. And then, of course, my uh, stepson wanted to go again. And, yeah. And my, my wife got mad that we weren't letting him go and kind of accused us of going out there and just partying and drinking and acting a fool. You got a keg out there or something? <laughs> she didn't know about it. Or what? <laughs> That's what she she always thought that kind yeah, of stuff. Okay. Uh, and and uh, it was when her sister spoke up and said, "No, it's kind of he doesn't need to go out there with him." That's um, when she kind of calmed down about it. So I knew that his wife knew something. Right. That was that was yeah, my ne- it, that, that was my next question to you. He's going up and beating on their house. Yeah. I mean. Well, and the other thing that kind of gave it away was um, all the girls slept in bed with them mm-hmm. every night. Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's, you know, it's not because they didn't have their own beds or their own rooms. They were, yeah, something was scaring them. So I'm thinking yeah, that this was being, it. Yeah. Being a little kid and having that stuff happen. Yeah. And who knows, maybe looking... In the windows and whatever, because I mean they're kind of attracted to kids. Aren't they they, they yeah. are they they're attracted to um, and I hate to say this, but they're attracted to women's cycles. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I, ever mm-hmm. told, I don't know if I ever told you that, John. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, they they're attracted to women's cycles, and they they I had one lady in Paris that had that <laughs> incident, and so it was kind of it was kind of odd. Me well, talking to her about that, so and that night that we first met too, there was one of the people in our group. Yeah, was having her her lady visitor. Yeah, you know, I mean, and that was kind of one thing. Luke goes, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but if you are, you got to why don't you get in the middle of the group? Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I ever told you that. Yeah, because they they they're attracted to women's cycles, and they just, I guess they almost have the same kind of mating stuff that we do. I guess I don't know. I'm this conjecture well, so i think you know predators in general yeah. i don't know if that's just like an urban legend or not but allegedly you know so hmm. the the girls were sleeping with the parents and and you were there for two more days yeah and no, i'm sorry next morning you guys go 
and the the your your stepson wanted to go with you, all right? Yes, he and, did. And so uh, your brother in law said no, and your wife, and then the, your sister in law said no too, right? Yeah, she she told my wife no, he doesn't need to go with him. Right. And was, she, was she older than your than your wife? No, she's younger. Wow. Okay. And so, uh, and so we we went out there. This time he he gave me a pistol, mm-hmm. and he went out the same way he did with a rifle, and uh, and his pistol. Mm-hmm. So we went out there, and uh, man, I was I was scared shitless the whole way out there. In fact, I didn't want to go. I tried to keep from going. Because I really did not care about fish. Right. Uh, and my wife just was just all over me, telling me I'm being selfish. I'm not. Right. You know, this isn't about you. You just, you know, all I've heard you do is complain ever since we've been here. And I, I talked to her several times. I just said, look, I got bad mojo here. I don't want to be here. I don't like it here. Right. And my thinking was... Um, this jackass ain't going to leave, but I don't want me and my family and my kids around right. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I just kind of got self preservation in mind for me and my family. Right. Uh, and I didn't think of this thing other than a creature until I start listening to your show. Right. You, uh, you're, you're, I mean, cause I know we talked off show. I, I said, I know this is no, this is no, um, this is not going to make you feel better, but this thing wasn't going to attack you. I've told you that before, and I know you, what what was your answer all the time? Same thing, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. I feel like if it was going to, it would have. Yeah, with it making the noise and stuff like that, it sounded really like it was hurting you guys back to the house. Yeah, honestly, but, the way it was but, like circling you and coming back around and stuff, it was basically guiding you back out towards where. You need but, to stay, quote but you, unquote, you know. But you said I wasn't going to convince you, or no one's going to convince you that. No, I mean that's, I mean, that's understandable too. I, I just um, to this day, I don't even I don't go to the woods. I don't. I have never been camping. Um, I don't go like um, to national parks or or anything like that. The last. Uh, National Park I, I went to it was a bunch of me and my buddies. Mm-hmm. You know, I ride. Right. We rode through a national park, and I was scared shitless. Mm-hmm. And I was just riding through it on a cement road. Yeah. You know? But just when the forest was on either side of me, I was horrified. Were you, are you able to tell me which, which national forest it was? Uh, one up in Missouri. I don't remember the name. Okay. Missouri, that's that's, then, that's Momo's area. And, and then yeah. <laughs> we went to some places in Arkansas through through the Ozarks, yeah, where they have the windy roads yeah. on the way back and to Texas. And, stuff. and I was I was scared shitless. And there yeah. was twenty of us. Yeah, the Missouri and Arkansas. Yeah, there's there's Bigfoot there. So oh yeah, so yeah, Missouri and, the, and Missouri they call him Momo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't Where know. I'm, I'm from, they call it the big hairy thing at the lake. <laughs> big hairy thing. <laughs> That's like one of my sisters, uh, her best friend in high school, uh, lived out by Dee Queen Lake. Yeah. And her boyfriend at the time was driving home and said that, of course, nobody. He's like, I was just driving, and this big hairy thing just ran out in front of me. And so that's what we always be like. Be like, look out for that big, big hairy, hairy thing, thing at the lake. The lake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um,. So yeah, you were riding through, and man, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Hopefully, talking about this has helped you a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 helped me a lot. Uh, like I said, when I first reached out to you, it must have been bothering me a lot more than I thought it would, because uh, you were a customer of mine, right? And so I just knew talking to you. And some of the other things that we talk about that we're interested in. Yeah. Um, I could just tell that you were uh, an all right guy, that you're a man that is honest. Uh, You mean what you say. You say what you mean. You're Mm -hmm. not embarrassed of who you are Mm -hmm. or what you believe or anything. And 
I find that stuff admirable. Right. Uh, and I just had a good feeling about it. And But I waited months after I knew you were into Bigfoot before I asked you. Right. That's actually why I started talking to you about stu- other stuff other than work. Right, to see, to gauge me where I yeah. was on it. So that's cool. I mean, I think... Um, Cause I think I, we, we talked about other stuff that we like again, all the stuff that we like. And, um, I know you, whenever we, t- we, we were talk about work and stuff, you know, cause like you're, you're very professional. And I know whenever I called you, if I need something done, I would just call you. I say, okay, this, I need this done. And, um, and you would get it done for me. So that, and so whenever, whenever you approach me about this story, I was a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, tell you, I was a little concerned because like you, you asked me because hey man I need to talk to you and it has to be after after five o'clock after we clock out I go I go is everything okay you go yeah I go okay well. meet me out back at the court to me this <laughs> <laughs> I was a little concerned I said oh man I hope I didn't screw up something I hope I didn't offend him or something so uh, I go okay so I was actually I was actually honored that you asked me that because afterwards when you when we started talking about the story. I felt good. I I just felt bad. I didn't know you back then because I I think I could have helped you. But I could have helped your brother-in-law back then. But that's just me, you know, thinking that way. This was in what '97. I didn't get into Bigfoot until I didn't really. I would, I've been into Bigfoot, but I didn't do start doing research till like '99. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that that was it. Yeah, I wished uh, for me it was a big step because I could have gotten in trouble at my job. Yeah. So I must have really. I know I really felt that I could trust you with it and everything I've asked that you, you know, say or not say, because I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing this. I don't want people to know my name. Right. I, I don't uh, do any research. I don't go right. to conferences. I don't want. You're not gaining anything from this. Not at all. Right. I, I have nothing to gain from this. Other than, uh, to be quite honest, uh, embarrassment. Right, and that's and that's that's, that's being truth. I'm yeah. just being truthful. If you say something like this to other people, you're going to get laughed at. Yeah, yeah. I and, mean, I've had periods of times when it's like I'm yeah. done. I don't want to talk about it anymore. You know, when I was I got into all this stuff when I was really little and. Of course, I got bullied, like yeah. hell, and whatever. You're a devil worshiper. You do all this stuff. You're a weird girl. What are you? Do? You know, is it's understandable. People, yeah, people are dumb. Yeah, people, you know, they're mm-hmm. mean, they're cruel. It's just like anything that's different. They want to attack and weed it out instead of having an open mind and maybe having the possibility that it's like, you know, we encounter a lot of bullshit artists, but you know, then there's that seed. Of, it's like, well. What if they're right? Like, you know, when, when after when I was on my way home from work, after you picked me up, you're talking about just how our perception of everything has evolved just like yeah. in the last decade. Yeah. Like 10 years ago, some of the stuff that just now it just it, it kind of makes sense. Then I've just been like, you're full of shit. But then it's like people I trust and my own experiences have just evolved and changed how I perceive things. And not a lot of people have an open mind like that to change their opinions on something. They yeah. want to to just like, nope, and I'm going to judge you, and you're full of shit, and you're just trying to get attention or whatever, you know. Yeah, I w- yeah, we were talking off show. I whenever I first got into Bigfoot, and you know, you know this too. Like we were in the, we were in the crowd that you know this thing was flesh and blood, and that was it. That's yeah, all we and, thought. It was a primate. And then as I've gotten older and I've talked to more people, I've talked to Native Americans and and I've talked to people that say they think they've seen a portal open up and the Bigfoot step in, step out. And I go, oh. yeah, back, back then know. I would say, oh, yeah, yeah, I would have too. Like, you're, until you're full recently, of shit. You know, I'm like, no, no, fuck that. But like, it, just even in like the last year or so. Yeah. Just and because people that I trust have evolved and yeah. because they're out there seeing it for themselves yeah and i don't know if i would have been of the camp that i am now yeah if it were not for my own personal experiences these people that you know i you know i'm i'm very fortunate for the people that i've found in in this field you know i've had a few hit or misses but i 
I like to think that the the core group that I associate with have good heads on their shoulders. Yeah. And. Yeah, we think outside the box. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, I mean, I've had I've, I've had some incidents. I haven't even talked to any. I haven't talked to you guys about this. I, I've had some incidents in Paris, Texas, uh, where I was leaving stuff. I was leaving stuff out. And I was leaving in like areas that that only I would know what, where this was in the woods. I would walk way deep in the woods and I would leave something in a crook of a tree, like some food or something. And I would come back the next day, food would be gone and there would be a shiny rock in there. Like I've never told anybody that. And this thing was like leaving me stuff. I was leaving it food. It was leaving me stuff back. And I've never talked to anybody about that. And I thought no one's going to believe me on that. No, I, Thinks I'm full of shit, or I'm. I mean, known animals do that. Court COVID, you know, ravens and crows and stuff like that. Yeah, will bring you little gifts and stuff if you start feeding them and interacting with them, and you know, other animals do things like that. It's just, I don't know. It's just some kind of, yeah, some sort of communication bond or whatever. It's like you do this for me, and then right, whatever, you know. But I was just saying, like back then when right. I when this was happening, I was documenting stuff. And I didn't tell anybody because the the fact I would I would get ridiculed for that right. if I brought that up. I said, "Well, I'm not going to say that because." But now I, I'm more open minded. I don't I don't really care what anybody thinks now. But mm-hmm. that's just me. But I had shit like that. I said, "Man, no one's going to believe me. I'm not going to talk about that." And, and that's the one of the disadvantages I got to say with teams is you have to agree upon. It's like this is how we do yeah, standards so it's more often than not, and it's so rigid a lot of times because it's like run like a business almost yeah you know? it's like this is what we stand for this is what we represent when you put on our team shirt you're 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 out there you know representing our team and what association like my second investigation group that i had with michelle we worked with the downtown people in tyler so we had to like maintain a public persona you know it's just tiring yeah and it doesn't feel as free to find your own truth. And I was kind of having a conversation with her about that the other day about, you know, because they released those UFO tapes. Right. Recently. Um, it's like, it's like under the radar too. It's like yeah, they released it. Like, and the COVID-19 is like taking most of its stuff. Yeah. And it's like, well, oh, yeah. I mean, they've done that before. Oh, and yeah, people, big, it's like just for a couple of days, it's like, <laughs> well, yeah, here's, here's this UFO tape that the government released. Okay. Whatever. COVID-19. Number yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> You know, about experience that we've had and, you know, she lost her her grandmother that she was very close with a few years ago. And she feels like sometimes she has thought that, you know, she's had signs from her. She's had whatever she. But then she's like, well, what if that's a product of my grief? And like, I, I, you know, it's just you have that kind of seed of doubt and you're back and forth. But when it comes down to it, you just kind of trust how you feel. Right. It's like, and I'm like, I, it's like for me, it's like it's fighting the two sides of my brain. The ones right. that want the answer and the one that's logical. Yeah. But for me, it's all about trying to find answers until I feel satisfied. Right. Which might be never, you know, but I want to understand why. That's, that's a good perception to have. I mean, I, that's what I've always admired about you is that you always. I don't care what it is i right. just want to know what it is you like, know like when someone tells me that they've seen a bigfoot i go where was it at and they tell me and i look at the area i pull up mm-hmm. the map look at it, i say okay why was it there what was it doing what was what it happened? doing why was it there is there water is there game blah 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 that's just me but yeah i mean with anything you know um the spooky stuff and everything yeah you know, there's so, oh god i i'm an asshole when it comes to things like that but there's so many x factors it's like you can show me a million pictures unless i'm sitting there with you i can't tell you right i cannot give you well the truth and with that i think people like to dig because they want to find their own peace of mind they want it to be something either to be exciting or to like have like a comfort feeling i guess if they think it's a loved one but i mean it could be but right. I can't give you the answers that you what, want. What what intrigues me about John's story is that I know we talked about this off show. Um, you you don't, you don't care to know what this is, right? You don't care to research it. You don't. That's that's not your thing, right? No, no, I don't have any 
Interest. desire to go to once I leave, I've told this story, I won't ever tell it again. Okay. Like I'm not going to mm-hmm. go on someone else's podcast and tell it. I'm right. not going to, you're not going to see me on Monster Quest or what? Finding Bigfoot or. In a boat, in a yeah. Hawaiian shirt <laughs> with a chalupa. Yeah, I, that's that's a jab. At that's a jab at somebody. But anyway, sorry. I I just I think people, not a person, but people, like to feel safe by thinking that we know and have discovered everything. Right. Yeah, I think. That's and true. I think that reality is completely different. There's some things that are going on in our skies. Like you said, the government just released something. There are things in nature that we're still discovering and trying to discover in the oceans, in the forest. And for anybody to be arrogant enough to think Mm -hmm. that we've discovered anything is, uh, in my mind, silly. And so when they, when you tell them you've seen something out of the ordinary, they put you in the category of crazy, goofy, weirdo. fanatic, yeah. weirdo, uh, whatever they, one of those categories. Like, oh, you're one of those people. You're one of those uh, paranoid people. Yeah. You know, whether it's in the spiritual, mm-hmm. the physical Whatever, there's all kinds of stuff going on that is unexplained, and we don't have all the answers, but we really like, as a as a people, mm-hmm. to think we do. And I think the government likes us to believe that because it keeps us safe. It keeps Sounded. us feeling happy. Because mm-hmm. look what's happened in the past few weeks with just what went on in the world. Yeah, Every little thing... <clears throat> Has been nothing but about this, this pandemic, and I've heard so much news on it. I have no idea what to believe about it. Yeah, right. Is it real? Is it fake? Can we? Can we this? Can we that? So I, I mean, think about how 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 much people would freak out if mm-hmm. we were told that we're not the only ones in the universe. Yeah, or there is a creature out there that is that big and that <clears throat> massive. But it won't hurt you. Yeah, I mean, I think eventually <laughs> yeah. science will catch up because let's go back in time, you know. Uh, thousands of years ago, the thunder was the gods pissed off at us and throw in electricity at, you know. And elephants mm. were monsters, you know, all kinds of things. Silverback gorillas. Silverback gorillas only exist, last hundred yeah. years. They were they were a myth. They were monsters. Um, the billy apes, they found all kinds of new subspecies of Mm-hmm. known uh primates recently yeah. that are massive massive those bonobo apes they're huge and they've had pictures of them in stores but they're in this area in africa that is very war-torn and so you don't go in there yeah. because it's not the animals you have to worry about and it gets delayed and all the information and stuff so. right and you know and plus sometimes like that video that uh, we kind of touched on of like the quote unquote baby Yeti or whatever, you know, things like that exist yeah. because sideshow attractions and things like that exist in, in those parts of the world. But these things turned out to be real when, I mean, even just in, in like the last 20 years, like a giant squid, a colossal squid, yeah. they weren't real. It was a myth, but now we know 100% they're real. That's pretty scary though. That's, I yeah, mean, that's, but I mean, it's so terrifying. It, at the time, we didn't have the technology to go to those depths to see right. one alive. They're just dead bodies and stories. Yeah, that's that's freaky, freaky, freaky. And I, I, I would see that and just ah. Uh. Well, and then you know, and, and kind of the same thing. Deep, and like the the coelacanth fish. Yeah, the thought to be extinct for millions of years, and they're living in I think it was outside of India. Yeah. But they're at, they have to live at a, such a depth. A depth, yeah. Once they brought it up, it died. It dies, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of... It's sad, but I mean, that's why. It's like, who knows what's in places that we just can't get to. Or yeah. it's just like, or like this thing is right there and all it has to do is close its eyes and peek behind a tree and you, 
gone. Yeah. Um, we I, so let's get back to the story about um, you were going back out to go get the fish the next morning and uh, oh you, yes yeah so <laughs> um so, so you, we we went we went there like I said it took us about an hour uh-huh. and he had jug lines strung across the river mm-hmm. they were attached at each side that's where you're originally going whenever this thing came out right? yes okay and the whole time there. Going and coming back, mm-hmm. it was dead silent. It yeah. was just, it was scary silent. Just, mm-hmm. I was, I was scared then too. Even though I was armed, I was still it horrified. Was, it was scared. Probably, it was probably watching you. Yeah, the something was because the woods aren't that quiet, right? right. Um, and and um, you could hear. When it would get quiet, because they had all kinds of frogs and crickets and all mm. kinds, of, it seemed like just everything went quiet. So we got there and we checked all these uh, jug lines. We had to get in a, a canoe and go from line to line. We'd, we'd go this way, right. go down river a little bit, go that way. Wow. Up each line. He had quite a few of them. And we checked them and they were all, we found a couple that, there were just fish heads or fish lips on the hook where something had torn them off. Uh-huh. What They weren't bit. They were torn. Yeah. And uh, we found even one hook that had been pulled so hard that it was almost straight. And these were pretty hef- big. Yeah, hefty hooks. Wow. And uh, these were for, for catfish. He would get the river cats. And he he loved those, mm-hmm. and uh, they would be they'd be huge. Those those are quite tasty too. Yeah, he uh, we actually ended up eating some. He had some frozen that we did eat that last night. Hmm. Um, but he was really ticked off because he wanted to get us fresh ones. Yeah, and um, there wasn't a fish on a line. We didn't get one. How many how many jugs do you think he had, or how many lines do you think he had? Gosh. Twenty. Wow. I mean, he 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 really had a lot all cleaned out in the night. Yeah. Do you think maybe <clears throat> that he had his family with him that night, and that's why he behaved like he did? I mean, theoretically, that's I mean, that, that's that, that's know. my thinking. That's yeah. my thinking is that it was protecting its young and its it was protecting its food source. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. I mean, to me, it sounds like they had the same agenda going on, like. Yeah, they were. I, I'm I'm willing to bet, and I'm I, you know, it's just conjecture, just a theory, that they were at the river pulling the fish while you are walking that way. That's what I'm thinking because mm-hmm. why would it be so adamant, you know, to to stop you from getting fish? It, it's that's just how I'm thinking. So yeah, if it like it didn't seem like it was coming at you. <laughs> But like trying to just like get up, like, like corral, you, like, you like corral to them get away, you to go away to look, pay attention to me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, or stall you to that way they can get time to leave. Well, it, yeah, it did not want us going the way we were going. Right. Yeah, it wanted us to go back. Yeah, because the way. Yeah, because mm-hmm. because I've told you I've told you off show before that they our theory was that you know whenever we were in the woods, Luke had told us to. To look at it one another, if we felt there was a Bigfoot area, because if there was one behind us, there was and it's trying to get our attention, then there was probably another family moving on behind us, away from it. So that's what like Velociraptor. Yeah, that's what we always <laughs> kind of it, it distracts you while its family moves off. But that's his theory on it. So it makes sense because obviously they're probably I mean yeah highly intelligent. And so until I spoke with you, I never thought of this thing of anything other than a monster. Monster, yeah. I never thought of yeah. family, kids, whatever. But I've always wondered because when it came out of that, mm-hmm. it, it it made like an entrance. Yeah, it wanted us to know it was coming. Mm-hmm. It wanted us to hear it coming. Mm-hmm. And, and that it wanted not, us to see yeah. it coming. Yeah, that's not character- characteristic, especially like the walking part. Because normally when they get up on you, you can hear them walk in, and then it just nothing. Yeah, 
and then they're right there. Yeah, and when it when it jumped, it uh, all of that, in my opinion, is it wanted us to see that. Mm-hmm. It wanted us whatever was going on. I guess wanted us to look at it and see what's happening with it. In other words, look to your left and watch me what I'm doing. Right. Uh, and when that happened, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. It's like I said, when this thing's staring us down, I was really expecting it to charge. And uh Yeah. I was I was uh my first thoughts and I don't like admitting this, but no one knows who I am, so I will right. uh were run. Yeah. And uh the only reason I didn't run, I've never admitted this either, is because I was too freaking scared to run. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have ran. It would have. It would have done the same thing. It would have shadowed you all the way back. I mean, but I I really thought this thing was going to charge and kill us, and then each time we went back there, or when we came out, I thought the same thing all the way out, and then I thought the same thing. When we went back and got his stupid fish, mm-hmm. or went to go look for his fish, was I thought I'm going to die here, and because uh, I, I just never felt safe, and I've never uh, uh, felt safe ever in the woods again. In fact, I, I will not go in the woods. Yeah, and uh, I know I know we talked off show about this. I told you if you wanted to go back, and I know you don't have any. You know, I desire to go back in the woods, but I, I told you, just tell me where you want to go, and I'll tell you whether it's Bigfoot there or not. And he said, "No, I'm not. I'm not going either way, Robert. I'm not I'm not doing it." So, <laughs> the so I, opposite way that we would do it. So I would just tell you, I said, just go west, just west of the Metroplex, and you're any national park, and you're good. Just stay in the Metroplex <laughs> for the most part. So, yeah, I don't know. They say that nature's taking back over, so you know, yeah, you might be hanging out in deep Ellen. Right now, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> right. So you can use, you know, they can just cruise down the sidewalks, and we'd never know. Well, <laughs> but I've learned uh, so much about what you guys do, because I've listened to a few of your episodes mm. before I ask you if you wanted me to come on. Yeah. Um, and I, I like the way you guys approach this. You're skeptical about... Asking the right questions, you're not right. you're not trying to disprove somebody, but you're not like some people who think everything they see is a Bigfoot either. Right, right. Mm-hmm. it's a very healthy to me, a very healthy and and scientific type approach to this. So, I mean, me and in, in my head, right. I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. Right, I'm one of those people that I saw what I saw. Uh, either you believe me or you don't, and I don't care either way. Right. I mean, whenever whenever you brought the story to me, I I, I mainly thought of that. I said, "What what's he has to gain? He's not. No. I mean, he just wants to." You, you told me at the very beginning, "I want to get this off my chest," and this has been bothering me. And so I go, "Yeah, sure," and I'll I listen to you. And so I've always thought that way about you. Now there's there's some people that that I've researched with that said they've seen a Bigfoot. And then when we go out in the woods, they act all scared. I say, "Hey, I thought you said you saw a Bigfoot. What's what's going on?" On like, oh, oh, TV, I watched Harry and Henderson. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 really big about you know because I don't I don't research anymore. I've told you that I don't research anymore. But if someone were to if someone were to call to to call me up and say, "Hey, I need help," I'm going to help them, whatever it is. But I don't I don't go mm-hmm. out of my way to. To go to East Texas and say, okay, I'm going to go pick this part of land and I'm going to go check it out and I'm going to research. I, I don't do that anymore, but... Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> well, you know... Not, not as not as duty, Not as often know. as I want, but at the yeah. same time, I, 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 I call out other Bigfoot researchers mm-hmm. and, I, and I say, well, you know, if I think they're bullshitting people, because like, a lot of people post mm-hmm. stuff and it's bullshit, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's bogus. If you have to circle your evidence, then it's <laughs> probably not evidence. Right. So <laughs> that's just me, but. Well, it's like that, you know, in your group a lot, you know, people get 
like to post stuff and it's like what am i looking at yeah i don't even know what i'm trying to see oh did you not see that thing over by my dog that what no we're we're talking about pen texas pen texas yeah. is a paranormal group that i that i'm the admin for and i took it over from uh kendall wilkerson she used to run the group and she's yeah. not she's doing family stuff right now you know personal stuff so i took it over for her and there's, there's a ton of people on there that post stuff that it's kind of oh. questionable and um, but I, I called them out on it. Right. And, and and you try to do it in, in a reasonable manner. A professional whatever, manner. You know, yeah. And not to be an asshole. But, you know, and it's hard not to do that. That's why people didn't like our team. It's like we were in the, yeah. the Tyler Rip bitches, basically. It's like because when we were out, like after sometimes we'd have a like, little meetups and whatnot and we're just out hanging out and whatever if we're not giving our speech if we're not on duty quote unquote or whatever sometimes we don't want to take this serious we don't want you shoving yeah. a million pictures in our faces so like what do you see what do you see what's that did we lose them uh oh we lost steven steven are you on no we lost oh. him he hung up he's mad at me <laughs> but um i'm calling him back go ahead but yeah it's just like people want Sorry. <laughs> You're Evan. Hello. Hey, Hello. What, what happened? I don't know. I texted you the call drop. Yeah. Sorry. All right. That's all right. You're back on. Okay. But, uh, okay. You know, people, to go back to season one, episode one, everyone wants to be special. Yeah. But if you don't give them the answer they want to hear, it'll piss them off a lot of times, you know, because... They just want you to agree with them. They don't want to have your opinion. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like doing that. I don't either. And I don't. I don't project stuff. And it's got to a point where people are like, "Look at this," and I'm just like, "Ah, oh, man, no, I don't want to talk about it." You know, you know, I don't want. Just, it's like, well, go with me over to this. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that because you're going to get mad at me. You're going to be upset because you're already expecting it to be something. And you want to impress me or something? Um, I, I'm really big on. I don't really like. I mean, orbs is one of my things. Is that I don't really like. It's it's a guide. It's not evidence. And yeah. so, uh, I I don't know if I talked to you about this, John, but I, I've I've looked at tons and tons and tons, hundreds of hours of video on Bigfoot, and I've seen you know moss insects that look like orbs, and I. Or so if, if, or if whatever, yeah, you know, it's so it's when bugs. people post stuff about orbs, that's good, dude. It's a, it's bugs, it's or a bug. dust, or yeah, moisture in the air, or a million things that you yeah. can't see with your naked eye. But especially if you're like using an IR illuminator or something like that, that's going to pick up every little speck of light that it possibly can that you can't see. But that doesn't mean it's fucking ghost. right. But you know, Bigfoot wise, I think with with your story, John, it's just um, I. Mm -hmm. You know, every because I everything you touched on, it, it's stuff that a norm, a novice wouldn't know, right? A like person the, that wouldn't know, like the the swaying, the grunting, the teeth, the slapping of the trees, and the talking, the talking. That's that, something that I haven't known about until recently. Yeah, yeah I've been so digging around with this half my life. I mean, now. I know, I know you're not here to convince us, but you know, I, I was already convinced. I said once you. Like I was telling you, like I was telling you earlier, some people just seen it, some people just hear it, some people you know smell something, and that's it. But you had a smorgasbord of stuff, and all at one sitting. So, to me, that's that's the real deal, Holyfield. So. Yeah. Well, I can I can say that you've helped me kind of get through some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, um, a few years back, I went to the doctor, still go to her, and uh, they diagnosed me with uh, PTSD. Right. Because mm -hmm. of all, I've had a, <clears throat> like I said, I had a rough and rowdy past, uh, very rough and rowdy, and mm. I never uh, connected the two that this was one of the traumatic events. Right. I had completely put this out of my mind for the most part um, for years until someone that we both know said, well, you know, uh, Robert, that guy's in all kinds of stuff. He yeah. likes Bigfoot. And then it just started, it brought all that back to my memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, this, tr 
traumatized me more than I like to admit. Right. right. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, you, you can see me, and you know who I am. I'm a pretty intimidating looking guy. Yeah. Uh, I would mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> so and <laughs> and and not much scares me. And this thing, like I said, not only scared me. Like I, I have no interest to go back in there and right, right, get back and, on the horse. Though, yeah, right? I mean, no, I didn't. And, and uh, I'm a guy that's done some pretty crazy stuff because of uh, you knew about my motorcycle accident, right? Well, I had a leg cast on and went and bought another motorcycle and while I still had a cast got back on a motorcycle and started riding because I was scared of it and you wanted to get back on it just to yeah. get that fear out of the way I didn't I like mean. the fear but this I've never had a a, a, a desire an interest desire to go back and inclining right. yeah to me it's it's like uh going back and 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 uh, going in the closet with the closet monster. Yeah. You know, right. you don't want to go back in there because you know what's in there. And and uh, I don't, like I said, for me and, and my, my thoughts, beliefs or whatever, I'm not trying to prove that this exists. I just know what I saw. Right. And uh, people are going to believe if this story helps someone, like you say it will. Yeah. Then... That's cool. That's the only reason I came in because you asked me to, and uh, I was gonna do this over the phone, but I talk a lot with my hands, and I thought it'd be better to do it one on one, so you could actually and I appreciate it see some of what I was talking about. But I, 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 uh, I appreciate you guys having me on your show. I, I like your show. I like the approach it takes uh, to this subject. Mm-hmm. Not everything is. I like the way you guys debate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't believe in it, uh, it does. No one seems to judge the other person. They just, yeah, that's how we are, and this is what I believe, or this is what she believes. And I like that approach. It's called healthy conversation, which we don't do enough as people anymore. Yeah, right. It's It's all either yeah, left, right, middle. Never done, you know, I've had not, not to get political, but you know, I've recently had like a friend because we disagreed on like a women's rights or something, you know, I'm mm-hmm. post and he's like, well, fine. He's like, okay, well, I'm like, we have one disagreement in 10 years of friendship and now you're just like, peace out. Yeah. It's like, if that's the case, you were never my friend. Right. You never respected my opinion and you're just, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Ash and I, we have different political views, but I love the hell out of her and, and I, and I respect her and, and her opinion to me counts and like her opinion for the show counts. And, uh, she's actually the driving force a lot on, on the research stuff that we do on the next show. I said, Hey, I need you to research on this. And she, she does a fabulous job. And I tell her all the time, I appreciate you. I have a weird thing. Like I do (laughs) it myself for nothing so, and I have for years yeah. just for my own entertainment <laughs> now and, if we could just get paid by doing it <laughs> <laughs> if anyone out there wants to sponsor us we'll totally write a, yeah. an, an ad in our own words um I, I just wanted to add and this is my thing that i always do i don't know if you caught this john but we're like a minute and 43 seconds in <laughs> <laughs> that's my way of saying an hour and 43 seconds for well, 43 minutes wow. so okay so we're, we're actually doing pretty good i didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. think we were gonna be able to cover all this in yeah. like two hours. So but we usually figure it out. Yeah, we wing it most you know. of the time. So, um, uh, Earl the Pearl's going to be happy of this episode. So, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> good deal. <laughs> so, when's um, he going to record an intro for us? I know he he needs to. He we needs need to. More, you know. Um. Yeah, he needs to do one. Um, but. So getting getting back to the story, I, I know we're we're just about finishing up on on the story, but um, you, you said you made it back, uh, and you you stayed like two more nights. You said, yeah, uh, we stayed two more nights, and both of those nights, uh, me and my brother in law kind of 
stayed out back and uh we drank and watched the perimeter yeah and uh me and my wife argued about going home mm -hmm. and uh, nothing else happened um uh, it was just the vibe there was just weird right you just in a place where i call it bad mojo Sorry about that's, that. That's fine. I do it constantly. We, we do it all the time. So. <laughs> it was just it was just bad mojo. Yeah. And uh, I had uh, however many hours the drive was home of being uh, being bitched at by my then wife <laughs> for <laughs> just just not uh man. It, we you know what really gets me is that you you're doing this all to protect them and she and she doesn't know that but you know hey you were you were in their best interest and. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. that's admirable, and it's it's what any man should do for his family. Yeah, and uh, I think if I felt like I could have told her that, I would have. But I don't think she would have accepted it at the time. I was having trouble accepting it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I really was. And and you saw it. Yeah, and she didn't, so she probably wouldn't be able to. Yeah, and I was I was just sitting there. Um, trying to wrap my head around everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the last couple of days, I didn't sleep at all. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the kids and all those guys were up, I'd be out in the back porch and I'd, I'd fall asleep sitting up for an hour or two just to... Right. Because um, you, you said earlier... Does this thing this thing was punching holes in not while you were there, but it had punch holes through that the trailer, right? That's what my brother in law had said. Yeah. He'd come up and slap the trailer. And uh I mean the the, the trailer they had was, was raggedy. I mean, it was just horrible. And uh if this thing wanted to get in, it could have got in. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Anybody could have kicked hard on this door and, and gotten in there. Um you know, after we had our encounter and after that last morning where we came back from uh, trying to go get the fish, we never really talked about it again. Yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't say it. He wasn't offering anything, and, mm -hmm. and I got to where I wasn't asking. I just, I just wanted out. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to go home. Yeah. And uh, I think that was... Uh, pretty evident um my wife was really upset because i just i wouldn't um, do any of the family activities with the kids or anything yeah i was just on guard yeah i mean she didn't realize that i had that pistol on me the whole time and didn't give it back to him until five minutes before we got in the van and left wow and I, I mean, even when they were out, because in that back, their backyard, the kids were, were playing back there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was afraid as quick as this thing was, it could bust out of there and snatch a kid up in a heartbeat. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it, traumatic. It could if it wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, like when it comes to things like that, it doesn't, I've never heard it. I can uh, any of them ever being violent towards children. No, I. If I've, anything, it's like you know those stories. The several stories where kids will go missing and they're like, I got rescued by a bear, or yeah. this bear picked me up and carried me off, or whatever. You know, um, for hundreds of years, and you know all kinds of stories throughout history. You know that just because you know, recently there was where was that North Carolina, Tennessee, yeah, that that happened. Mm -hmm. And just mm. ever since hearing that story, just every now and again, something like that will pop up on videos and stuff where it's like they got carried off. This kid got, you know, or disappeared or bears or something it was like, but they would always come back. They were never harmed. Yeah. So it seems like to me kind of like, you know, like when was it in the, in the early 90s when that kid fell in the, the gorilla pit? Yeah. And the gorilla. the gorilla picked it up and was. Protecting that kid Protecting from the around. other from the others, it seems kind of like they understand. 
the what a child is. The only story that I remember reading about, I think it was a Renee Renee, Renee DeHinden's book. It mm-hmm. was um, I don't know if you guys remember Albert Al- Albert Osterman was a camper. I I think it was in Canada. The or guy something. that got carried off. In yeah, the, in and his, the, uh, in his in his sleeping sack. bag. Yeah, he got carried off by a Bigfoot, and then he was he was met with a family of Bigfoot, and they were feeding him, and. He was trying to leave and they wouldn't let it leave. And so he had a, a box of snuff and he convinced him to, he convinced one of the Bigfoot to eat, eat some snuff and he got sick. Oh. They got sick well, and, smart, right? and he ran off as soon mm-hmm. as he got sick and started, I guess, throwing up or something. And, ran, and it's, it was a story I remember reading as like an elementary kid. It was like one of the, yeah. I said, man, I got kidnapped. So Bigfoot's take me, but, but um, might have just been like, oh, I need to take care of this baby. Yeah, he got so. adopted. It's like it makes me. Oh God. Can you like, imagine that sleeping in a sleeping bag and and just something picking you up and putting it over your shoulder and it's taking like, off with you? Here's some food. You're my baby now. Oh, I've adopted man. you. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you guys yeah. have any, you guys have any questions for John? Man, I don't. I don't know what I haven't covered. Yeah, really, you know, Stephen. Steven, are you still there? Hello? Probably not. Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> My, I hit the button on the mute button accidentally. Oh, uh, okay. No, I don't I don't have any uh, any questions other than, you know, I, I appreciate you, John, for, you know, I know that I know that's it's not, uh, I can't imagine what you saw other than, you know, just put in perspective of what, what you told us, but to actually go through that and I, I can man I uh, I, it's, it's hard to put into words to, to yeah. say I guess just other than thank you for coming forward and just okay. sharing your story yeah I think one thing I can kind of say too is I have PTSD as too as well because I was in a long term very abusive relationship and um, the thing that really helped me because you know you because it wasn't in quote unquote physical, but we all know abuse is all uh, kinds of abuse is abuse. Yeah, abuse is abuse. It takes many forms. But once yeah. I got my diagnosis, finally, it took a while to finally get the right therapist that actually got me on the right track with this. The best thing that helped me really is to understand what his personality type was, what his behavior was, and also what this. Uh, I don't want to say mental disorder, but you know, this, this, you know, the PTSD, the symptoms of it, to understand that, it really helped me process things and to make things better with me. And I, I was fortunate, you know, I have a, a friend that was in the military too, and he really helped me a lot with that. And honestly, just understanding the psychological aspect of not only my trauma, but why he behaved the way he did towards me. And how it didn't really have anything to do with me and it was all him really helped. And I hope maybe better understanding this creature's behavior can help you. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Because uh-huh. I, I know I know because we talked a bunch and you said, I don't care what you say, but I, I don't think it was going to hurt you. But that's just me. But Yeah. Well, if, you know, and you guys made a point. If it, if it wanted to, it would have. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing stopping us. I mean, my damn brother-in-law damn sure didn't have his rifle pointed at yeah. me. Just sitting there staring at him like I was. You, you know, Luke used to have us do this this drill in the woods whenever we'd go to woods, and I would take I would take a camera with me, mm-hmm. and he would want us to walk down. He would he would pick certain trails, and we would go down. I'd walk down with somebody, and he goes, "Take a picture of anything. I don't care what it is. Birds. If you see any kind of game, you know, armadillo, whatever. Take a picture of it, and then." And I go, okay, that sounds easy. I'll just, I'll just do it. So I'm walking down the trail with this guy, and a red fox pops out. And I have the camera in my hand. Mm-hmm. And a red, a red fox pops out of, out of the trail, looks at me, and then crosses the trail. I didn't even, I didn't even budge to move the camera mm-hmm. to take a picture of it. And so I freaked out because it came out, out of nowhere, and it was making noise and stuff. I said, ah. Oh. So not to equate that to a Bigfoot, but... I, I, I froze just for a second because I didn't know what to do. I said, oh, well, I, the camera's right there. I didn't even take mm-hmm. a picture. So I don't know. It's <laughs> one of those things that. 
you're too busy being in it to yeah. think of things like that. So, um, I'm sure Luke's going to hear this. It's probably going to want to talk to me because actually he called me last week and um, I told him potentially you were going to be on. And he, I think he was excited about hearing your story. So um, That's good. The one, one thing I can say is I can understand why there's not footage of these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, the, the, the woods swallowed him up. Yeah. And, you know, you're in East Texas where the woods are not that thick in a lot of places. And this thing hid yeah. or just blended in. That fascinated me about your story about that. Mm-hmm. Like it, like it was there and, and it belonged. Uh, if you get up, I, I guess these things are, Known to be up in the Pacific Northwest is, mm-hmm. is that? Right, yeah. I mean, you think how easily they could hide yeah, in thick oh, yeah. woods like that? Because I mean, technically, Red. I mean, it's a, it's a rainforest in like the Washington area, and yeah, and then you get down into like the the Sierras and stuff, where it's you know huge redwoods and. Um, funny story. I I, I researched with this guy named Rand Trusty. He's from the Pacific Northwest, from Washington State. And he was in Conroe whenever we were forming TBRC, and he had told me that you know he's been in he's been in the you know the redwoods and all that stuff. He says the big thicket in East Texas is the thickest shit he's ever seen. He really? said thickest shit. He says thicker than Washington State, and he says that's thick up there. He says, but the big thicket, he says nothing can touch that. Mm-hmm. So he says this, you know. Mm-hmm. And another thing, you know, I think that happens a lot and. When we've been out, especially because they usually like a lot of animals, they get active right at right at dusk. Yeah, you know, and so you see this thing, and it's dark. You go to shine a light on it, and it does this thing like what I've heard referred to as like just basically spider web. It's like where it looks like you can see it, but once you shine a light on it, it's just like the undergrowth and everything yeah. just like it comes into the foreground, and it kind of makes it worse to actually use a flashlight or anything yeah. like that. I don't know, it's strange stuff, man. It's just, um, yeah. I think, uh, I don't know when we're going to go back out in East Texas. Mm. I'd like to go out to this area where yeah. John's uh, thing. And I, I talked to Luke and Ken the Marvelous Marvel and mm-hmm. Tim Clay. They were interested in going out there. But um, I'd, I'd like to go out there and just try to maybe, and you, you said you might have an idea where you uh, thought. Kind of, you know, I've lived there for almost five years and. All kinds of stories, kind of in that general, like Lake Port, Kilgore, that side of Longview. Mm-hmm. All kinds of stories and UFOs, and that's where the gangs go and dump bodies, so it's haunted. And then Kilgore's got like the their urban legend is the the Chicken Man. Hmm. Yeah, and there's, there's all kinds of stuff like that down there. Uh, Poyito, by the yeah. river. Yeah. <laughs> Poyito. Um. Okay. So, um, we got like three minutes to kill. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, we can we can talk about uh, we can talk about Oak Cliff. Right. No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. We're you not just kidding. wanted to push it by. Time. I just wanted to do that. So, <laughs> so guys, check out my new soundboard. <laughs> so yeah, I actually, I actually have uh, some new sounds on here. Uh, Stephen, you 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 appreciate this one, Stephen. Brutality. And this one. Finish him. Steven, Steven, are you still on? He got us on mute again. Dang it. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I won't lie. I kind of feel like one of those characters here lately. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like Mortal Kombat, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'm rocking, I'm rocking the katana look at yeah. work, you know, because I got to wear a full suit. Yeah. But also a mask. So it's like I feel like you an assassin. Can- you, you have a sound if, if you can get the if you can get the come here sound bit, that'll be awesome too. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. over you. I was looking for that one. I can find it. So. Get over here. <laughs> when would we use that? I don't know. I just I just like it. I just like it so Fertility, much. When we roast uh, someone, probably. Like I, I have know. this. I have this one for like for people that have big money. Who's I, got big money? I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe we'll have someone on that has big money. I don't know. <laughs> one day. Yeah, we can get Mark Cuban on here. Mark <laughs> yeah. Cuban. Okay. And so yeah. I have this one for whenever we talk about wrestling again. 
So that's just me. Except you need to do it more relatable. There's no crowds now. Yeah. It's coronavirus. Just that's, that's yeah, all right. That's true. Bitch yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just say, just get, uh, what's his name? Um, the Ayatollah Rock and Roll. Uh, just have that Jericho, there. Jericho, yeah. 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 No, yeah. We need, I'm on, I'm on him on the show. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm, I know. I, <laughs> One day. I need to talk Goals. more wrestling, but it's just me. But it's just yeah, me. Man. Yeah. This is me. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. John, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me. Um, and I know you said you, you didn't want to talk about this with anybody other, other, other than us. And, but if you ever need me, man, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always available for you. I just want you to know that. Oh, yeah. Same here, dude. If you ever need anything, call me. Okay. Anybody else got any Excellent. shout outs? Uh, shout out to my lovely wife. Who likes to say bitch ass a lot? Uh, <laughs> shout out to my twin boys who drove me crazy today. Uh, shout out, sh- shout out to Tim because he gave me a shout out too, and I forgot to say thank you on the shout out about him congratulating me on the marriage. And, yeah. Uh, shout out to Luke for uh, to be on the show, even though I wasn't there to talk to him. And shout out to Ken too, the Mar- even though he did a shout out to me. Yeah, he didn't do a he, shout out to you. you know, yeah, so I'm gonna do a shout out to him, Ken. If you're listening to this, yeah, yeah, I'm sing you, you know, yeah, Kenny, what the hell? Yeah, gay, I'm gonna sing you, gay boy in bondage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, John, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for our listeners. Um, I know I haven't said this before. I mean, I've said it before, but I want to say it again. If you have iTunes, go to iTunes and give us five stars and. Go to uh, I think Stitcher. Stitcher's got five stars too. Go to Stitcher's and uh, do that as well. Um, we're also on Alexa and Echo. So uh, mm-hmm. if you want to tell Alexa to play Bigfoot Club podcast, she will play it for you. You should have seen this motherfucker mm-hmm. when he found out how that you could do that. It's like, <gasps> come see this! Oh my gosh, he's like a little kid. It's funny. Yeah, but yeah. And our social medias. We're yeah, on, we're um, on we're on Twitter. Uh, Bigfoot Club One. Uh, we're also on Facebook, so if you want to reach out to us on Facebook, and I never said this before, but if you got any stories, and it doesn't have to be Bigfoot stuff, it could be other stories. Anything, it could you be know. you know flying humanoids or whatever, immortals yeah. or rakes and leaves. El chupacabra, chupacabra. Yeah. Did you see that meme that I posted? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. big foot and the, the, the chupacabra. Chupacabra. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good stuff. <laughs> um. But thank you, everybody, for downloading. Please continue to download. Um, you know, send us comments. Send us, you know, we're good with criticism. We're good with praise. We don't really care. We, just as long as we get something. So, um, You'll be responded to in, yeah. in proper, yeah. properly. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, you'll be responded. Gracefully, in a, but directly. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being part of the show. Good night. I must bid you adieu, and so, goodbye, and good night, bang!